I'm Dave Denkel, and we're going to talk about the scourge of Chinese drywall. Chinese drywall has cost homeowners millions and millions of dollars in lost equity in their homes and many, many foreclosures. In the following short video, we will examine the problem and how to determine if you have a potential Chinese drywall property. So let's first of all talk about what is Chinese drywall. Chinese drywall is simply defective drywall that was produced in China and imported into the United States between 2001 but as recently as 2009. The problem is that the drywall emits sulfide gases, specifically hydrogen sulfide and carbon disulfide, which tend to smell like rotten eggs. The odor may not be noticeable after a few years, but the real problem is the damage it's done to the occupant's health because of respiratory problems it can bring on, such as asthma, chronic coughing, headaches, and sinus issues. Additionally, any copper wires or copper lines in the property will corrode and turn black and powdery, eventually resulting in product failure. Municipalities have different standards of removal of the drywall from a property, including every piece of metal down to just removing and replacing copper wiring and plumbing lines, but always the drywall has to be removed and every bit of it. The vast majority of this drywall is imported into the southeastern United States, with over 50% of it going directly to Florida. So what do you do about Chinese drywall? Unfortunately, the only real solution is to remove all Chinese drywall from your home and replace it with good drywall. Remember that drywall is easily crumbled or pulverized, so it could be risky for you to try and remove it yourself. Unlike airborne hazardous materials like lead-based paint and asbestos, phosphogypsum-based drywall cannot be sealed with a coat of paint. So removal and replacement is not the real question. That's a given. In the following video, we will visit an actual work site where the contractor is in the very initial stages of starting the reconstruction of a Chinese drywall townhouse. If you're in a property that's been rehabbed or built since 2001 and you're in the southeastern United States and you smell any odor in the house that smells anything near like rotten eggs, even if you don't smell anything, you have a raspy throat or your eyes water, what you need to do is take the steps to check yourself to see if in fact there's Chinese drywall in the property. In the video you'll see the quickest ways to do that. Today what we're looking at is a townhouse that has a Chinese drywall problem and what we're going to do is go inside and see how you can diagnose that problem as well as what to be careful of in the future. These can be extremely costly to renovate and you'll see why in just a moment or so. This is Oscar Echevera with Gaia Construction. He's the contractor on this job. As I mentioned before, this is a Chinese drywall replacement, a complete rehab of the property. Everywhere you see drywall on these walls, it has to be taken out, as well as the electrical and any plumbing that's copper related. Oscar, uh, you mentioned to me that the uh, house is, has, doesn't have copper plumbing. This specific house uh, doesn't have, it has CPVC, which is uh, similar to PVC but stronger. The plumbing is not going to be compromised. That's good news. We have another issue we didn't mention before, and it's all the copper related to um, the sprinkle system. Yeah. Right now we shut it off, and you'll see the heads, how corroded they are. So let's take a walk through. I went down to the uh, electrical junction box. You want to look at that again? Let's take a look at it right there. Okay, so we're in the garage right now, and this is uh, the electrical breaker panel. And as you can see, if you take a closer look at the difference in between copper that has not been completely compromised and copper that is completely black, that is being exposed to the sulfur gases, the corrosion on it. The danger of having electrical wiring corroded is essentially a failure of the system. That's what is not acceptable to do the remediation and leave the wiring the way it is because the wiring right now is completely compromised and since these gases will travel inside it's God knows where and I'm gonna show you later on a couple of uh, switches that we have opened the effect that the gases are having which is essentially the same effect that is having on this so let's take a look at it here for example Look how black it is. Well, it's this is blind. Yeah, yeah, this is that the ground. Copper color. That's a ground wire. Correct. Even this. Uh, There's no this, insulation on that. No insulation on that. And whatever we have insulation, even the ones that are insulation are corroded as well. So how soon until these start failing? Pretty soon. What happens? It, cr it increases the resistance on the um, wire, and then the wire can heat up 
and eventually can start on fire. Right. All right, what we're going to look at is the effects of the sulfur gases on the fire sprinkler system. This is a cap that we have recently removed. As you can see, you can see the color, completely black, oh, yeah. corroded, oh. gone. And this Here's is what you cap. cap, yeah, what the cap looks like. This is bronze, but oh. you see the effect on it. This is the kitchen area. Now remember, cabinetry and everything is new. Uh, how old is this condo? A few years? 2006. 2006. Seven okay. years. About seven years old, but it's in great shape. Yeah. Except for the fact that you're choking and gagging while you're in here breathing the fumes. Yeah. And how people lived in here this long, I guess you get used to it, but that's the pantry over there. You're going to try and save as much of the cabinetry as you can. That's correct. The way we're going to do this is the floor is going to be completely protected. We want to save it. There is actually no reason to replace the tile floor. All the cabinetry is going to be removed, protected. All the countertops removed and protected, and they're going to be reinstalled. Everything that is steel will remain the same way because the sulfur does not have the same effect on steel, the effect that it's having on the copper. I want to show you also the coil inside oh, yeah. the air handler. Yeah, as long as you still have air conditioning coils in the home, they haven't been taken out, this is the way to tell. Those are copper coils and they look like they're just plain old fashioned black. Yep. So everything in there is black. So this whole air handler unit is gone. To come out. Correct. If you look carefully in here, that's aluminum. The fins are aluminum and you can see that they haven't been compromised. But the copper has been. And that's what's that's what has to be taken care of unfortunately. Absolutely. Everything that has to do with appliances will be compromised, especially the copper coils on the uh, exactly. compressor. For the same reason. But I definitely can tell you that the copper connections on the electrical are compromised. All of the appliances are going to be replaced. We're not saving them. Same issue with every single piece of lighting equipment has to be removed and disposed and okay. copper inside. Here's another socket. Another socket and uh, you can look at it and you can tell how corroded it is. Now that ground wire is always going to be copper. And yep. You can see that it's black. Make sure that you do your research when you're going to buy a house with a Chinese drywall or defective Chinese drywall. Defective Chinese drywall usually will look rather gray than white. Instead of bright white. Bright white. Gypsum. Correct. It's a gray color, more gray like cement. Gray color. And rarely will have a label. Usually does not have a label. So as you can see, whatever piece that we move, we won't find any label behind it. You know, the thing about it, when this contractor or developer built this little complex of townhouses, somebody came along and said, I have a great deal on drywall for you, and if he saved a dollar or two a sheet... That's a great deal. ...tens of thousands of dollars, frankly. Yeah. And the uh, inducement to do that was sheer greed, but at the time, no one knew that this is what could happen. Now, it's important also to say that the aluminum is not compromised. We're focusing more than anything on replacing copper than replacing any other metal in the house. The additional cost to do the drywall remediation, and as you can see, are related to having to remove all the trim from the house in order to access every single piece of drywall. We have to remove the doors, we have to remove the trim, baseboard, to the fact that you have to change all the drywall, you have to remove everything. So we essentially we're doing a new house. You know the framing and maybe some pieces of insulation. Here's this another example. No labels anywhere. So now this is what every wall in the house is going to look like. Yep, yeah, exactly. We will try to save some of this, but most likely it's just going to rip off the same way oh, okay. that is happening right now. So that's the vapor barrier. So you do everything up to code and you do it right so they don't come back later and make you do it all over. Exactly. Again.